Hello and welcome to the episode 229 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we have the first ever Beatles concert in Hamburg, four gigs in the same venue and a production of an aborted single. 17th of August 1960, at dusk, the van carrying the Beatles with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass and their manager Alan Williams arrived in Hamburg, West Germany. The red light district was coming to life as the group reached the Kaiser Keller, where Derry and the seniors were about to go on stage. Bruno Koschmeider, owner of the venue, led Williams and the lads to his other place, the Indra Club. Tired and without food since leaving Liverpool, the band still went on performing immediately, while Williams and Koschmeider settled down to prepare and sign the contract for the 48th night residency at the Indra. The night dragged on with few customers and an understandably mild performance, until an old woman, leaving above the club, threatened to complain to the police if the noise hadn't stopped. The solution was quick and simple. The volume was turned down, further lowering the energy of the Beatles on the stage. After the performance, Koschmeider showed the lads their contract. The Beatles were to play four and a half hours every weekday, from 8 pm to 2 am, with three 30 minute breaks. Six hours on Saturdays, from 7 pm to 3 am, with four 30 minute breaks, and another six on Sundays, from 5 pm to 1.30 am, with five 30 minute breaks. In exchange for their services, they were to be paid 30 Deutsche Mark per person per day, about 60 pounds in 2020 money. The contract also included a small print clause that would come to play an important role in the future. The band was forbidden to play anywhere in 40 kilometers from Hamburg without the written consent of Bruno Koschmeider. After business matters were at rest, it was time for the lads to rest themselves. On this first night, they slept at Koschmeider's flat, five in one bed. Koschmeider left them alone and went to sleep somewhere else, but this was naturally a precarious arrangement. From their next night, the Beatles would be relocated in their exclusive living quarters, a rather dingy room behind the screen of an old cinema, which showed American Westerns all day long. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed at the St. John's Hall in Liverpool. There was a little experiment tonight as Paul left bass duties to Johnny Gustafsson of the Big Three, who shared the bill with the Beatles, and picked up singing without an instrument, like the solo singers of the day. The experiment was short-lived. In 1962, the Beatles, with Johnny Hutchinson on drums, performed twice in the same night, at the Majestic Barroom in Birkenhead and at the Tower Barroom in Wallasey. Hutchkinson was the drummer of the Big Three, sitting in for the spell between the sacking of Pete Best on the 16th of August, see yesterday's episode for that, and the arrival of Ringo Starr on the 18th. Funnily enough, the Big Three had to find themselves a substitute for Hutchkinson for their engagement at the Oral Park Barroom on this date. In 1963, the Beatles had the last of six consecutive engagements at the Odeon Cinema in Ladidno, Wales. Before going on with four concerts at the Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, let's stop for a second to talk about what you can do to support this podcast and other music-related content I intend on creating. Unless this is the first show you listen to, in which case please head to www.simonmas.com support to see what can be done, you know what to do. Please be fab and make the difference in any way you can. Thank you! On the 17th of August 1965, the Beatles flew from New York City to Toronto on a chartered airplane to continue their tour. After being taken to their rooms at the King Edward Sheraton Hotel, the Fabs met the representatives of the North American chapter of their official fan club. In the evening, the band played two 27-minute performances at the Maple Leaf Gardens in town, 
in front of a combined 36,000 people. The shows were a bit lacking. The sparkle of the excitement the Beatles had felt at the Shea Stadium had vanished to be replaced by laziness, boredom and routine. To be fair, it would have been really difficult to keep a good performance up after months of utter madness and screaming. The fans didn't pay to listen to the music, some said so outright, but to watch the band. Ringo Starr commented that they had, on numerous occasions, stopped playing mid-song and nobody had noticed. John Lennon, after months of screaming shut up in the microphone, just started screaming obscenities to the fans. What was the point? It seemed everybody was just content to come to the event, scream off the top of their lungs and or watch the Beatles play without hearing a thing. Funnily enough, exactly one year later, in 1966, the Beatles were again in Toronto, Canada for another two shows at 4 and 8 pm at the Maple Leaf Gardens. The arena had a total capacity of 18,000 people. The first show was attended by 15,000 people, the second by 17,000. It's hard to believe that the Beatles were much more excited than they had been one year before. In 1968, on this day, George Harrison unexpectedly decided to leave England for a short holiday in Greece with his wife Patty and Beatles assistant Mal Evans. Let's close the episode with Paul McCartney producing the third Apple single of Mary Hopkin. Or trying to. Paul had to produce Mary's second album, but the plan had been changed when the Beatles decided to start recording Abbey Road. It was then decided to try with a single. Paul selected Doris Day's Kessera Sera for the occasion, a song Hopkin didn't quite like, but she agreed to sing it. Kessera Sera and the single B-side, The Fields of Saint Etienne, were recorded today in Abbey Road with Paul on guitars and bass and Ringo on drums. Hopkins sang and played acoustic guitar. She turned out to be so unhappy with the recording of Que Sera Sera that the single, due to be released on the 12th of September, was issued only in France with the fields of Saint Etienne as the A side. This leaves me with nothing else to say apart from a quick reminder about tomorrow's episode, with the Ringo Starr debut as the Beatles' new drummer. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.